Okay, I have to wait for this uh, to sh start sharing. So there are uh, several exercises, I believe seven, as I call. Uh, name 2-methyl cyclohexane is incorrect. What is the correct name for that compound? So you shouldn't try to pick a correct name. Instead, what you need to do is use pen and paper, draw 2-methyl cyclohexane. You need to find out what it is and then um, name it. And then once you name it, once you have named it, named it then uh, match correct answer with one of those that are offered. So two methyl cyclohexane. So we want to draw cyclohexane. So this is carbon one and carbon two, two carbons of the double bond. On carbon two, according to this name, we have methyl group. And now that uh, we have a formula, then you can tell right away what is wrong uh, because uh, while two carbons of the double bond must be consecutive, one and two, when there is a substituent on the double bond, that has to be carbon one. So this has to be one methyl cyclohexane, not two. So correct answer, so this would be wrong. And correct answer is one methyl cyclohexane. cyclohexane. And so now you go back to the to the original. Um, question and a one methyl cyclohexane is correct so answer a is correct but note that b is not acceptable answer one methyl one cyclohexane because when we have cyclohexane we understand that carbons of the double bond are one two and it's redundant to use number one so we don't say one cyclohexane so one methyl cyclohexane is correct one methyl one cyclohexane is not even though we know that one refers to double bond. And then two methyl one cyclohexane, that's wrong. That's for students who see this name and don't realize that you are not supposed to use number one. Also, uh, that may draw some students who, uh, who end up picking, uh, who end up uh, uh, just picking answer out of this by inspection without doing drawing. And finally, six methyl cyclohexane is if students don't count it correctly and end up with one six for atoms of the double bond. But anyway, correct answer is A. Uh, question number two, name E, 3-bromo-2-butene is incorrect. What is correct name for the compound? So. So that's an incorrect name. So let's draw a formula. Let's draw E 
three bromotubutin. So E that means antagon or opposite. Three bromotubutin. So two butin. This is two butin. And then carbos one, two, three. On carbon three there is bromine. So E means that uh, here we have. If we can draw all the substitutions, let's just do it more easily. I, I may have to flip a bromine and uh, bromine metal group. I will see. Okay, so. Higher priority substituent here is carbon, carbon versus hydrogen. Higher priority bromine versus carbon bromine. So bromine and this carbon should be on the opposite sides. So we have to flip them. So this is E3 bromo 2 butene. So what's wrong with it? Well, the uh, thing that is wrong with it is the numbering because it's not 3 bromo 2 but it still is E, because even if wrong name said E, then correct name, uh, it's still E, but uh, bromine should be on carbon 2, because this is 2, 3 double bond, and you can number from either side. So uh, from either side, left to right, right to left, it's 2, 3 double bond, bromine should be on atom number 2. Of course, when you have this on the exam, it may not be all about this just trivial uh, thing about uh, numbering. Uh, you should look very carefully. But obviously, uh, if you have wrong name, there is something that is wrong with that name. And you need to figure out what is it that is wrong and then which name is correct. If it's multiple choice, it's easier because uh, correct answer is always one of the four. And uh, if it's not multiple choice, then uh, it may be a little bit more challenge because you have to come up with answer on your own. So correct answer is A, 2 bromo 2 butin, E2 bromo 2 butin. butin. So both for 1 and 2 correct answers are A. Now question number 3. Periophyllene has the molecular formula of C15H24. It has two double bonds and no triple bonds. How many rings does it have? So pen and paper and do the calculation. Uh, calculation is not that difficult. So uh, number of degrees of unsaturation. 2n plus 2. That's n is uh, number of carbons. So 2 times 15 plus 2. That's 32. Minus number of hydrogens and halogens. Number of hydrogens is 24. So 32 minus 24, that's 8. Divided by 2, that's 4. That means there are 4 degrees of unsaturation. There are no triple bonds. That's good. So there are four, total of four uh, double bonds and rings. It has two double bonds. That means there are two rings. There are total of four. There are two. So correct answer is 3C. Question number four. Which alkene is the most stable? So for this, you should... Uh, yes. You should actually draw all of them. So things are a little bit slow. Okay, so cis 2 3 dibromo 2 pentene. So that also tests whether you know the nomenclature. C15 
cis, that means two bromines are on the same side. So two pentene, um, oh, so, uh, sorry, um, I made a mistake. Two, oh no, that's correct, two, three, yeah, no, I, I, it's correct. Okay, so double bond is between carbons two and three, and two, three dibromo, if it's cis, that means two bromines are on the same side. With bromines. Okay. Trans 2 3 dibromo 2 pentin, that means bromines are on the opposite sides. As I feared, now my cats are complaining they can't get out, so I'll have to make a quick break to let her out. The strands, that's compound B, I'll do remaining two in a second. And then we have three, four, cis and trans, three, four uh, dibromo pentins. So now cis. Uh, okay, first let me put that wrong. Now this um, cis refers to two pentin, and that means two carbons are on the same side, cis. Because two identical or similar substituents are on the same side, that means cis. And if they're on the opposite sides, that means trans. And so here we have A, B, C, and D. And when we are comparing stability, we can see that A and B double bonds are tetrasastres. They have four substituents. While uh, C and D are uh, or, or trisubstrates. So A or B are going to be more stable. And when it comes to two of them, B is trans. Trans is more stable than cis, so B is correct answer. So that's how you're looking for, what, how you're looking at it. You're looking at number of substituents, and then uh, the and now on, you may be wondering bromine, how come it's substituent and how it undergoes hyperconjugation? There are free electron pairs on bromine, and those free electron pairs on bromine end up being donated to double bond. So it counts as a substituent. So anything other than hydrogen counts as a substituent. And so you simply count number of substituents. The more substituents there are on double bond, the more stable double bond is. So A and B, four substituents on double bond. C and D, only three. So A and B are more stable than C and D. And then B is trans. Trans is more stable than cis, so B is more stable. So B is the most stable. If you were to look which one is the least stable, then, well, C and D are, C and D are um, less substituted. And then you would assume that cis is less substitute. Although, actually, I would think in this case, well, uh, this will be kind of pretty close. But yeah, cis would be less substitute. It's more steric interest here. Yeah. Okay, so that's question number three. Or was question number no, four? Question number five. Uh, again, let me wait for you start, to start sharing. A compound with molecular formula C8H11Cl 
reacts with two equivalents of hydrogen in the presence of palladium. How many rings does it have? So similar to previous compound, just a little bit more complex in that this compound has halogen. So calculation is slightly more complex. And you are not told degrees of a saturation. You have to infer that from um, the fact that uh, re the reaction occurs with hydrogen. So first, let's calculate number of degrees of a saturation. 2 times n plus 2. And in this case, number of carbon atoms is 8. So 2 times 8 plus 2 is 18. Minus number of hydrogens and halogens. So we have 11 hydrogens and 1 halogen. So that's 12. 18 minus 12 is 6. Offer students make mistake here and omit chlorine. And so 18 minus 11 ends up being 7. And they then divide by 2, 3 and a half. And now students are stuck. What do I do? Three and a half degrees of a saturation. How could I have half an unsaturation? That means you made the calculation error. So go back and figure out what you did not, did not take into account. So 18 minus 12 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. And uh, if reaction is with two equivalents of hydrogen, each equivalent of hydrogen reacts with one pi bond. That means three degrees of a saturation, two of them are pi bonds. Remaining is a ring. So there is one ring. So correct answer is 5b. <laughs> it's not really that funny. A woman that lives close by to me thinks she has Alzheimer's or something like this, but she's right now arguing with her dog. That's the one that was going nuts, but they're now having a pretty violent argument. <laughs> and she's actually a nice lady, but... Uh, yeah. Question number six. Uh, what reagents would you use to prepare two bromo, one chloropentane, pentane, yeah, from one pentane? So the best way is to write that down. So two bromo, one chloropentane from one pentane. So this is a little bit difficult to figure out without drawing things down. So yeah, I went back to showing it in a second. It's good, okay. So this is how you would write this down. Compound is 2 bromo, 1 chloro pentane. So this is 1, 2, we can do 1, 2 here. So that's supposed to be the product, and starting material is 1 pentane. So question is, how would you do it? And uh, if you recall lectures, there are two possibilities. One of which, of course, is going to be correct. Uh, this is correct way to draw three member drink, but I want to do something else. So that's why I'm doing it a little bit less. Well, actually, this is also acceptable. So one is to carry out reaction with bromine in the presence of excess sodium chloride. Another one is reaction with chlorine in the presence of excess of, let's say, potassium bromide. And so um, I have to space this a little bit. As you may recall, a reaction mechanism uh, halogen that you are using as uh, an ion, so from sodium chloride or potassium bromide. It could be sodium bromide too. Potassium bromide is kind of more uh, readily available, but you may not know that. So. so the halogen is going to add to more substrate carbon. So this would be Cl minus.
So top one would be, top mechanism would be consequence of reaction of bromine and sodium chloride. And the bottom one So you need bromine on the second carbon. In the first case, chlorine would end up on second carbon. And that's this combination, chlorine with potassium bromide. And so, or sodium bromide, but chlorine with some bromide. And so now we go back to answers to find answer that contains that. So as you can see from these exercises, you have to do a lot of writing on your own. And then, um, uh, match your answer with correct answer. Uh, and I'm sharing wrong one. So you can see it matches answer C, chlorine in the presence of an excess of potassium bromide. So correct answer is 6C. Question number seven. What is the major product of the following reaction? And you have here hydrogen bromide adding to a double bond and double bond is attached to four membered ring. Addition of hydrogen bromide to double bond proceeds to carbocation. So H plus adds to end of double bond that results in carbocation here, formation of carbocation. And then um, there is likely to be a rearrangement because it's secondary carbocation. So five member drink will form. And of course, the question is which of the two five member drinks you're going to get. You can draw the mechanism, but basically um, uh, C is the correct answer. So, um, so maybe I can show you that. So this is the carbocation and uh, three and four membered rings undergo ring enlargement reactions, which means that one of these bonds next to carbocation will shift towards carbocation so that uh, we end up with a membered ring. So this is that carbon, carbocationic carbon. If you wish, you can even indicate which bond it is. So this is the bond that you have moved plus so that new bond that you just formed. Okay. So um, if you move it from this carbon, or actually, okay, you move it to the carbon that used to be carbocation. That carbocation is a methyl group. It also has an H, but that H is redundant because we don't indicate individual H's. If you wish, you can still keep it. But this carbon is important. This, this carbon right here. This now new carbocation. And that's the carbocation that reacts with 
bromide anion. I'm not going to indicate free electron pairs in bromine, but it's free electron pair from bromine that adds to empty orbit. And so then you can tell that the product is C. Where bromine and metal groups are next to each other. You can leave this as is, or sometimes for emphasis, you put CH3. So you can tell from this the product is C. I'll see maybe to copy my answers and simply paste them as the last page. Uh, if I didn't post this or just post a new version with this last page of just my drawings. Uh, and then question eight. What is the product of the following reaction? So it's addition of bromine across a double bond. And uh, this test, you do you know that addition of bromine is anti from the opposite sides. So look at each of the four. In this case, you can actually inspect all of these. And by inspection, you can figure out which one is correct. So look at the first one. Two bromines added from the same side. Addition from the same side is syn. It's not bromine. Bromine doesn't add syn. Bromine adds anti from the opposite sides. One up, one down. That's wrong. Uh, syn is both up or both down. Second one is anti. One bromine added from the downside, one from the upside. That's anti. That looks right. You do the rest, just, just to double check. C, both added from the bottom. That's sin. That's wrong. Remember, sin is, are things like catalytic hydrogenation and hydroboration. This is anti. So B looks correct. And D involves six member drink and some rearrangement. That's basically for students who are confused and don't realize that there are no rearrangements here with additional bromine or anything just to make up. And also uh, students who didn't study, when they look at these, to them D looks correct because it's different from the rest. See, there are three five member drinks and here is six member drink. And so those who don't know anything about this material, they will just go, oh yeah, D must be it because D is different from the rest. And so that must be correct answer. But so correct answer is B. So uh, it's a good idea to think about it. What is this question testing? Because questions are not just random questions. They test something. Did you remember something? Do you know the definition? Do you understand the concept? Uh, in this case, do you know the stereochemistry of the reaction? Stereochemistry of addition, sin versus anti. And so that completes these exercises. Um, are we going to have a different amount of time for this exam?